Hi there, and welcome to the session dealing with Site Modeling in Revit Architecture 2012. In this first session, we'll take a look at how to import an image file, how to scale it, how to create a topo surface based on points, and finally how to show existing and new terrain. We'll start a new project and choose default template for this exercise and remember to create a new project. We want to go to insert and to image and browse to whatever image file of a landscape you have available with a ruler or some kind of scale on the image. We'll place it somewhere in our project and scale, press the beginning and end of the ruler and type in the measurement in millimeters. This is a way to get started with a project without having detailed or precise information from a land survey but only uh, bitmap photos of the area in hand. We'll now draw a property line around our plot. The plot should be 1000 292 square meters and we'll see that there is some uh, inaccuracy involved with this method. We'll jump to our side view uh, and before doing that we will copy our photo and paste it aligned to current view. This will allow us to have an underlay in our site view when going to massing and site and starting creating our turbo surface by placing points. We're now ready to start adding points along the contour line, starting with the line placed in level 16,000 and we'll notice that the generated topo surface already is hiding um, the image so we set the view to wireframes. And we now draw along the all of the lines and after a little while we should have something looking like this and be able to finish the topo surface. We'll delete the photo in the side view and go to the small error in the model side and change the increment to 500. Afterwards we'll look at label contours. Whoops. Got a small mistake here meaning that we'll need to draw the label contours across the contour lines in order to get the specific elevation written on the line. Go to our 3D view, mark the model, and we now want to put 
put the generator turbo surface in a phase called existing. So this will be our terrain before we started doing any modifications dependent on the construction on site. By going to massing on site and graded region, this will allow us to create a copy of the uh, turbo surface, a copy that will show uh, the new conditions. By marking both of them, we'll notice that there is two surfaces, even though it's not. Um, visible in this view. We have marked the new condition surface and are now making smaller modifications in the turbo surface. Variation that's caused by whatever construction or building we are planning to put on the site. For instance, we'll finish this surface and go to the 3D view and look in the shaded appearance how the two surfaces are colliding. We'll go to our site and notice that with a hidden line appearance, get a drawing that can use for that much, but if we change it to wireframed, then we'll see the existing condition as dash line and the new condition as a full line. If we go to annotate and make a region, we can draw a filled region that symbolizes the roof of the house. And the reason why we do that is because a 3D modeled house would be also shown as wireframed in this view. Okay, I hope this gave you a first impression of how to model turbo surfaces in Revit. In future sessions we'll look at more advanced and more accurate uh, ways of dealing with modeling a site. So bye for now and hope to see you soon. Take care.